Hello and welcome to the first tutorial video to appear on this channel. This is kind of a test run to see how well this format works, so if you see things that work well for you or don't work well for you, then by all means uh, let me know in the comments and we'll see if we can improve on this a little bit if needed. Uh, for this first installment, I am going to be walking through how to play Unbreakable Determination from Ninja Gaiden. It's the background music for level 4-2. Um, the reason that I'm doing this song is because I taught myself this on the CP33 that Bismuth brought to Awesome Games Done Quick 2017 because I ran into JRP there on Wednesday and he expressed interest in learning the song. So I taught myself it with the intent of kind of showing him how to play it, but then I never found him later in the week. So this is a ridiculously belated answer to that question. So without further ado, we will get into learning the sections of this song. Okay, so before we dive into the main sections of the song, there is the lead-in, which is simply this. So, really simple. It's just C-sharps. Uh, the song itself takes place in F-sharp, so C sharp is the dominant, so that's really just, like I said, a lead in to the main, the first main section, which we will go into next. So before we go into the first section of the song, uh, I should just mention in general that the song isn't terribly difficult to learn because each section is the same stuff repeated twice. Um, however, especially in the later sections, it can become pretty tricky to pull off. And it can be pretty tricky to pull off both hands together. So first we're going to discuss uh, the right hand and then the left hand separately for the first section. So here's what the right hand sounds like. And that will repeat twice. So that was four measures, and then the next four measures are the same thing. So here's what the left hand sounds like. Now I played that without pedal so that it was more clear what the notes are. Um, and you can see that there's a little bit of syncopation going on, so when we combine the hands, this is going to get a little tricky. So, if you want to learn like a simplified version, then you could simplify it to something just like... I don't know, I'm just kind of like improvising that right now, but if you want something simpler, that doesn't con doesn't get as confusing when you're putting the two hands together, then you could do something like that potentially. So in practice, you're probably going to want to use a sustain pedal with this. And what I do generally is put my foot down on the pedal at the first and third beats of each measure. So I I should probably do something to be able to display when I'm pressing on the sustain pedal. That's one thing I could potentially do to improve this display. Um, but that was one press and lift of the pedal. And that would be another press and lift of the pedal. So here's what it looks and sounds like when we put both hands together. Now remember, I mentioned that there's a significant amount of syncopation going on in the left hand especially, and so learning to do both hands together could take some practice and getting used to until you kind of get some muscle memory of how the rhythms in each hand individually work. But here's what it looks like. So that about summarizes the first section of the song, because it's just that twice in a row. Uh, after that, and before the second section, there is a two-measure break, so let's go over what that entails. The right hand is actually really simple. So 
So that's your right hand. The left hand is a bit more complicated. Now I played that without pedal, but again, uh, if you're playing the rest of this with pedal, then you can choose to do that with pedal, where you lift up and put down uh, each time you change key. Okay, so that covers the break. And now the second section, which starts at measure 11. Uh, I'm going to do the right hand first again, and I'm going to include the break, the ninth and 10th measures, just so you can see how it flows together into the next section, because really the next section kind of has a lead in from the last measure of the break from measure 10. So here goes. Now again, that repeats twice. I just played it once just to illustrate it. Uh, one thing I want to point out about this though, right there, I go to the fourth finger. And the reason that I go to the fourth finger is because it's going to immediately go down here. And if you don't go to the fourth finger there, you're going to run out of fingers and it's going to be totally goofy. So that's why we do that. Now the left hand for this section uh, is very similar to the left hand for the first section and actually this left hand is how the rest of the song goes. Um, so there's another part coming up for the right hand that we'll have to go over but the left hand is the same for the rest of the song and it's very similar to before. So before, uh, the first three measures that we had before will be the same as the first three measures here. So you can see that the only thing that changed was the very last part, because before we had... Whereas now we have... So at this point, the only thing that's left to learn is the final right hand section, uh, because the left hand is going to be the same as what we just learned for the previous sections, because like I said, it's the same for the rest of the song. But the final right hand section is definitely the most difficult part of the song to play. So I'm going to go over it a little slower than the other parts. One, to make it easier to see on the display, and two, so that I don't butcher the whole thing. So let's explain a few things there. First of all, this again is a lead-in from the previous measure. So what we really have here is... Uh, that's basically the last measure of the previous section. So th that, that first scale upward is in the previous measure. So measure 18, because measure 19 is really where this all starts. So I want to discuss some of the fingerings in that last section, since it is tricky. Uh, first of all, for the lead-in, I start on my second finger and immediately cross over to thumb so that I can immediately just go up the, the E major scale up to B. So that makes that really straightforward. Uh, for the next section, you could potentially go straight to middle finger from having your pinky on B. What I tend to do is go to the fourth finger and then switch my fingering to make the middle finger hit uh, A the second time through. Like that. But it's up to you whichever one you feel more comfortable with, really. Now, measure 21 into 22 is where things get really hairy. So, let's go over that. You're probably going to play with your ring finger on B. Now what I like to do here is stretch my middle finger to hit C sharp. The important part, whatever you do, is that you want your thumb to be on A so that you can cross over. Uh, and you want to cross over with your ring finger, not your middle finger, your ring finger, on G sharp because you need to hit four notes in total with your thumb 
landing on C sharp down there. Uh, and then the rest of it is sort of like a tongue twister for your hands because yeah. That's what the rest of it goes like. The part that's tricky is you're basically doing that right there can get really tricky and you're liable to screw it up a bunch when you're trying to practice this. But that is basically the gist of the remainder of the right hand. So at this point, you know all the parts, we just need to put them together. So I'm going to play from measure nine, which is the start of that break between the two major portions of the song, through to the end to show it all together with pedal and everything. That's what would happen if you wanted to loop and play this forever, which I don't really, but for illustration purposes, that's where the loop would restart. So that wasn't quite perfect, but hopefully it got the point across, and uh, hopefully this tutorial was helpful, and like I said, if you have questions or feedback, feel free to leave a comment, and thanks for watching.